I'm John Buchanan. Now, a little while ago, we made a video which was all about working with external synths. And that's proven to be quite a popular video because, of course, a lot of us have got hardware synths lying around which we want to integrate into Logic. But of course, things aren't quite so simple. If you're new to this game, the idea of how you might connect your keyboard to Logic to use it as a controller keyboard is of course different from, I've got a synth which I want to be able to use as a keyboard, but also to be able to record its sounds into Logic, so that effectively we also then have an understanding of the difference between MIDI and audio and how those signals flow in and out of our computer. And what we're gonna do in this episode is to break that down into digestible steps so that you guys can make the connections that you need to. So firstly, let's just talk about MIDI and then let's talk about audio. MIDI is a control language which allows us to send messages from a keyboard like this one into Logic so that we can, let's say, play Logic's instruments. If I decide I want to use Studio Piano and I don't want to draw the notes in using the pencil tool, I want to be able to play them, I need a controller keyboard which uses MIDI to connect to Logic so that I can play Logic's internal instruments. Hopefully that makes sense. So MIDI is a control language. Audio is a recorded signal. And the best way to think about audio is, I'm a singer, I want to plug in a microphone, and I want to be able to connect that microphone into Logic to make recordings. Well, computers don't have the three pin plugs that we need when we're audio interfacing to make recordings. What we need is a box which also connects to Logic but which allows us to plug in microphone signals or line level signals to make recordings from synthesizers or microphones. So there are two separate things. We're gonna break that down some more, but think of them as two separate things. MIDI is a control language. Audio is a recorded signal. Okay, let's look at an audio interface. Let's start with audio. So if I wanted to make a recording, into Logic using the sounds from inside the synthesizer, or I wanted to connect a microphone to make recordings, I would need an audio interface. So here is an audio interface right now. The top of this shows us a few separate connections or ways of controlling the sound, but it isn't actually going to show us the connections themselves. So this is what the top sort of user interface section looks like, but let's look at this in a bit more depth. So on the front, what I've got is a chance to make the input connections that I want. Let's suppose I was a singer and what I wanted to do was to record my voice into Logic. I would take my microphone lead and I would plug it into input number one. Now it turns out there are two separate inputs on this particular interface. Some audio interfaces have one input, some have two, some have four, some have eight. Effectively, it's the same thing over and over again. I've got two identical ways of being able to make a recording. And the reason there are two is it allows me to make a stereo recording if I want to of, let's say, a piano. I can plug in two microphones at the same time. So what I've got is an opportunity on the front panel to make the input choices I want and to connect different types of cable. Now, I can actually connect either a three pin microphone cable or a quarter inch jack into this input instead. So if I've got a signal coming out of my keyboard and I want to be able to record the sound of that, I can connect it into these same inputs. And either I'm going to make a recording using a microphone which means I might need to use this option here, which is called phantom power, or I can select an instrument input source. So having connected the type of connector I want, I can then make that decision. So on the back of the interface, I've got some different connections. So firstly, I've got my power button, feels like that's gonna be important, but I've also got this little USB-C connector. This is what is gonna connect my audio interface to my computer. So to be able to make recordings, I'm gonna patch a USB-C cable from here into the back of my computer. What I've also got is these monitor outputs. Now, for me, what these do is they feed the sound from this audio interface to my speakers. So the moment I connect this audio interface to Logic, what I'm then in a position to do is to then select it as my chosen audio interface, and we'll see how that works in just a while. What I can then do is to say, okay, in order to be able to hear the sounds coming out of Logic and hear the sounds that I'm gonna record into Logic, I need to connect these two plugs, left and right, 
which we refer to as a monitor pair of cables, and they connect directly from the interface into the back of my speakers. So one wire for the left cable, uh, left speaker and one connector for the um, right speaker. And again, these here are quarter inch outputs. And on the back of my monitors, I can either use a quarter inch um, input so one quarter inch cable, or what I can do is to use a quarter inch jack to what we refer to as an XLR three pin plug. Now what I've also got, and this is where life gets a little bit more confusing, is I've got the potential for my audio interface, which is the whole of this box to also act as a MIDI interface. So if I wanted to, I could take an external MIDI synthesizer and I could connect it to this box and it would provide MIDI interfacing as well as audio interfacing. Now for now I'm going to leave that, that's something we're going to look at again in a subsequent video. For now I'm just going to use this device as an audio interface. So we've looked at the front and we've looked at the back and hopefully now the top makes a little bit more sense. What I've got a chance to do here is to control the level of the signals that I'm going to record. In other words, if I'm recording my microphone and I want my microphone to become more sensitive and I want to adjust the amount of level going into my uh, logic project, I can adjust the gain control here. And what the monitor control does is to turn up the volume to the speakers. This is the sound of my whole mix. All of the sounds coming out of Logic come back to this box and my monitor controller allows me to control how loud the signal is as it goes to the speakers. So for audio interfacing, the sound of recordings that I make and playback from Logic, this device is controlling all of that. But that's not doing any of the MIDI interfacing. Let's look at that next. Okay, so what I've done is I've now plugged in my audio interface. You can see the white cable at the back that is providing the connection via USB-C. Now it turns out that that means that this particular interface is what we refer to as bus powered. It takes its power from the USB-C bus. You can see there isn't actually a separate power connector that's making this light up and work. It's taking all of its power over USB. And for smaller interfaces like this, that is quite frequently the case these days, which makes them really good if you're working on the move or you're working in a kind of more portable rig. What I've also done is to connect the left and right outputs from the audio interface to the speakers. That means that now this audio interface can send sounds to my speakers so that I'm in a position to hear my Logic project play back. And for now, I don't actually have anything connected into either of the inputs. So if I wanted to record the sounds of this keyboard, I would need to make those connections. And we'll do that in a little while so you can see how that works. And the only other thing that you need to know is that I have patched this cable into the headphone port. Now, if I was working with headphones, that would be the obvious place for me to connect that particular um, uh, sort of, um, yeah, my headphones, that's where they would go. But of course, what I've got here is a feed that's going to Will's computer. So the way that you can hear the projects that I'm working on in Logic is that they're coming out of the headphone output and they then feed into the rig where he records the sounds coming out of Logic. So the reason why there is something connected to the headphone port is for that reason. And if you were working with headphones, that's where they would go. So that is the audio interface from a hardware perspective. How do I set it up in Logic? Well, if I now come to a new Logic project and I come to the Logic Pro menu and I come to settings, there is a dedicated audio page. And in here, what I'm in a position to do is to choose the interface that I want to work with. And simply by connecting this interface via USB, the Vault 276, which is the name of this particular interface, is available to me. By default, if before you connect an audio interface, you will probably discover that the system setting is the one that's currently being used, or depending on the computer type, you might find that audio is being routed directly to the speakers for your particular computer. So I've got the opportunity here to send my sound to Zoom. Let's not do that. I could send it to the studio display that I'm working with. I could send it to the speakers of my um, MacBook Pro, and that would be fine. Obviously that then wouldn't reach the actual speakers I want to listen through, but much more importantly, I can't make audio recordings through any of those uh, playback um, options. So the Vault 276 does two things. Firstly, it allows me to hear the sound coming out of Logic, but it also allows me to make recordings because it's set up as the input device as well. And when I'm happy with my choice, I can press apply. And what that does is to make the Vault 276 
the audio interface for input and output from this logic project. So that deals with audio interfacing. What about MIDI? The idea that we have these control messages that we can send from a keyboard to play Logic's own instruments. Well, this is a synthesizer, which has sounds in it of its own, but most of the time that I use it on this channel, I'm simply using the keyboard as a means to play Logic's own instruments. In other words, it acts as what we refer to as a MIDI controller. Let's see how that works. So what I've got obviously is just my MIDI keyboard. Now, everything up here, relates to the way that we can make sounds within this instrument itself. It is a synthesizer, and all of these dials control the way that sounds within this instrument can work. But as I say, most of the time on this channel, I just use the keyboard. So how do I actually make connections into Logic? Well, that happens via one cable, which is a USB cable. So let's flip this up so we can actually see what I'm talking about. The power is here. This isn't a bus powered synthesizer. It needs its own power supply. And so here is the power lead. And if I turn the instrument on, we can now see that all the lights come on and the power is being established, if you like. But on the back panel, in terms of setting up a connection which allows me to actually work with Logic's own instruments, all I need is a USB cable. So this cable here, literally just connects via USB, and this provides what we refer to as MIDI over USB. The USB cable carries all of the MIDI messages from this keyboard into Logic. Now, a little while ago, I showed you that on the back of the audio interface, I actually have a MIDI in and out option as well. So what I could also do from this instrument would be to use a slightly more old school approach to MIDI interfacing. So the original traditional MIDI cable is a five pin DIN cable like this one here. So what I could do would be to take one of those MIDI cables and connect the MIDI out from this instrument to the MIDI in of the audio interface. So effectively I'd be establishing out to in via an old school MIDI cable. But these days, lots of new synthesizers allow you to connect via USB, and straight away that provides immediate connectivity. And for some controller keyboards only, you won't actually find that you need power. Just like the audio interface, you'll find that bus power can be provided over USB. This one does need a power supply. So now I've established this MIDI connection over USB. If I put the keyboard down, what we're in a position to do is to fire up any of Logic's instruments. So if I decided I wanted to play the piano, I could come into the studio instruments and fire up the studio piano. And straight away, I can play the keyboard. And we can hear that sound. So that's coming from a MIDI control message from USB going into Logic and it's then triggering the internal sounds. This piano sound is not inside this keyboard, it's inside Logic. I'm simply playing it over MIDI via USB. So that establishes a MIDI relationship between our keyboard and Logic's own instruments. And as you can see, now that I've got my USB cable plugged in, I can play my controller keyboard to trigger the sounds within Logic. But if what you want to do is to work with a synthesizer, to record its sounds, it's time for you to go and watch the Working With External Synths video, which effectively picks up from exactly this place and will show you how to work with Logic's external synth plugin, which allows you to configure how you can record sounds from a synthesizer via your audio interface into Logic. So go and watch that video next. But crucially, what this also does is to introduce the world of hardware. This idea that yes, we can absolutely work with Logic on a laptop. We can even use its keyboard to establish playing notes in. And of course we can draw them in with a pencil tool too, but it's much more fun to be a musician when you're working with Logic. And there are lots of ways that we can be musicians. We can obviously work with external um, MIDI controllers to be able to play Logic's own sounds. But of course there are really fun things that we can do with control surfaces too. So what we'll do in future episodes is to configure a slightly more involved rig using different types of equipment. Now, just to draw a line under a couple of things, if you're the sort of person 
person who is now looking around on eBay for secondhand synth purchases because you like the idea of being able to bring hardware synths into your rigs, great. You may well find that older instruments don't allow you to connect MIDI via USB. Lots of older synthesizers only have five pin MIDI. And if you want to work that way, a bit like my Vault allows, you will need some form of being able to use a MIDI interface to act as a bridge between that synthesizer and Logic. So if there isn't a USB connector, you might need to look into having a MIDI interface too. As we've already seen, some audio interfaces allow you to just work with MIDI as well, but sometimes a separate MIDI uh, control interface is going to be necessary so that you can plug in your older MIDI devices. But the world of working with hardware is a really exciting one and one that we will continue to explore. But for those of you asking the question about how to actually make the connections over MIDI and audio, as I said, hopefully this answers that question. Now go and watch that other video.